Now, I'm going to assume that this is a wild wombat, and if so, why are the parents letting her touch it? Why? I guess technically you can't pet a wombat all day, every day, but Sandy doesn't really get that. She's so happy and excited that she never wants the affection to end, even when the staff members at the Sleepy Burrow Sanctuary in Australia are in the middle of cleaning her home. She's also really excited about this sprinkler she seems to have just discovered, but don't even think about not petting her, because clearly that's not even an option. You know, when I saw this video of this little white mouse and this snake, I just braced for impact. I just knew it was over for the white rodent. Turns out that not only does the snake not eat the mouse, but the snake ends up being the very thing that saves the mouse from drowning. Insane. Babe, check it out. Check out this grizzly bear running full speed, and I thought for sure it was coming for whatever unlucky person was holding this camera. Uh, death would be the worst outcome. What did you say? Uh, death would be the worst outcome. What? Uh, death would be the worst outcome. Uh, that don't sound like something that's meant for you to deal with, my friend. I'm so tired of arrogant morons thinking they should own animals like this that aren't domesticated. Leave the big cats in the wild, man. That's where they belong. I don't do this because it's safe. I guess I get that uh, rush of adrenaline just from being around him and working with him and can't imagine doing anything else. My pretty girl. Oh, you're gonna get right. God, dog. It is absolutely unbelievable how huge this wild Russian boar is. I mean, this thing would make a lot of bacon. Yikes. I was kind of afraid for these little dogs because if this boar had been more angry than scared, it would have destroyed these dogs very easily as well as the human holding the camera. Wild boar do not play. What happens when you get a bunch of monkeys and a bunch of bananas? Uh, not too hard to figure out what happens next, I bet you. Look at that, eh? I got nothing to eat. As I do these videos on wild animals, one interesting thing I have learned is that wolves are not as dangerous to humans as people think. Sure, if they want to, they could tear your butt up, but they're not notoriously aggressive towards humans. But I still wouldn't be this close taking any chances. Let's see the Yeah, <laughs> I think he's gonna be tug of war with you. Look at this. 
Yep. Uh, sure. I think I've tested my luck for the day. <laughs> Ruger, no! Ruger! Ruger, no! Come on, Hazel, come with me. Ruger, no! Uh, bro, you better get your dog before he winds up being a Pop-Tart for this big brown bear over there. Ruger luckily listened to its owner. So, some of you may have seen the short that I created with some good old mystical rapping in the background this past week. If not, the link is in the description. That was from this video of a girl in California who pushed a large bear to get it away from her dogs. The 17 year old girl basically just reacted and did what many of us would have done. Pretty scary situation. Houston's home for news. We are back now with a worm warning. The hammerhead flatworm has been found right here in Houston. And the warning from experts comes with a couple of don'ts. Okay. Don't touch it, and not that you would, but don't cut it in half. It can reproduce by laying eggs or detaching part of its body and turning into two worms. It can regenerate and start growing from from there. The same could be the case if someone tries to cut it in half, but general curator for the Houston Zoo, Kevin Hodge, says that is not the only reason why you shouldn't touch them. These chemicals that they exude can, can be an irritant to your hand or your skin. Neurotoxins, both Hodge and Kuhlman say ward off predators and may also help in digestion of their favorite food, the earthworm. So you're telling me these alien-like worms regenerate? So if you cut them up in 10 pieces, it will turn out to be like 10 individual hammerhead flatworms? Oh, hell to the gnaw. Hey, son. Hey. Um, no, that's not a German Shepherd, folks. This is a real wolf. Like, for real. The wolf trying to get a little bite of that woman's backside. The praying mantis is kind of an enigma because they're so gentle, usually when it comes to humans, but extremely savage when it comes to attacking other animals. This video is hilarious though, especially how the mantis looks down at the grasshopper after its little dance. This line epitomized what it means to be pissed off. Hi, big lion guy. Hi. Oh. Hi. Whoa. Hey. Hi. Hi, lion. Oh. 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 Watch out, baby. Back up. Come on. Oh. Yeah, Kelly, so the story that this man is telling is about how much he loves his snakes, but UPD said they started to get some complaints, which led to an undercover investigation. And from there, they found some things that they said were concerning even just beyond having those snakes. To Marty, these are family photos. My kids. What? His kids, Burmese pythons, or berms as he calls them. Each one has a name, like Lumpy or Stubbs. Some more than 15 years old, up to 30. Everything I've done is just for the snakes, not for me. Hell to the naw, are you kidding me? 20 pythons? Look, my Caucasian brothers and sisters, y'all know I love y'all, but y'all crazy as hell. 
people. UPD took Marty's 20 pythons, half of them more than 10 feet long. And in the backyard. In the back of the home were the uh, what they call feed animals, which included 585 rats. And in addition to that, there were about five dead rats. Um, 46 rabbits. In addition to that, there were four dead rabbits. Even if they were for feeding the snakes, nearly 600 rats and dozens of rabbits at one home is a problem, UPD says. So is owning or selling pythons without an exotic animal permit. Man, I ain't even got nothing to say on this one. Just watch this. New at 10, it's an unlikely friendship between an 82 year old man and a water snake. Oh, really? OK, it's something you got to see to believe, so we're going to show it to you. Channel 6's Cole Johnson now joins us to introduce the unique duo. Hey, Chris and Leslie. Tim Jones worked in zoos for a large portion of his life and is even the director emeritus of the Cameron Park Zoo. He now lives near Blum, where his private pond is home to a water snake he calls Big Bertha. Off a gravel road near Blum sits the Jones property. There you'll find Tim fishing at his pond. I like that pond. I love water and I love what's around a pond. Frogs, toads, turtles, snakes. It isn't just a relaxing spot. It's also home to his friend of five years. I haven't seen you lately. Big Bertha. Uh, she's a pretty nice gal. I don't name animals usually, but uh, there's something about her. I started calling her Big Bertha. And then I said, well, Bertha May sounds better. An avid fisher, Tim started sharing his catches with the local reptiles. And they'd come eat it. And I, I kept on until they got closer and closer to me. Then some got pretty comfortable. A snake came from underneath, came up real slow, and took that fish out of my hand. I just about passed out. Tim knows they aren't a danger. That was my life, working with snakes. But he still draws the line with Bertha May. She'd come right up my leg and, and take a fish, and she'd crawl in my lap if I'd let her. They have got uh, little, little teeth that are sharp, about 160 of them, and they hurt when they bite. Uh, they do me because I'm a sissy. All righty then. An interesting face-off between a golden eagle and a fox. There were no attacks that happened. I'm guessing because they have some respect for each other. Sampai jumpa lagi Rizka. Nanti malam ke rumah ya. <laughs> Oke Rizka dadah. Ya dengar kita lewat. Iya. Dulu putri istirahat ya. Istirahat ya. Ya. This will be a hard no for me. An absolute 0% chance I would be this close to a croc like this. I mean look at this fool y'all. Look. I don't know about this idiot but I got a lot more life to live. When I saw this moose so uncomfortably close to these kids, I was like, uh-oh. I figured there would be some kind of trouble there. The good news is, is this female moose was probably just chilling and didn't feel at all threatened by these kids and left without incident. Yeah. 
This bull elephant doesn't seem too interested in causing mayhem, but rather seems to be curious as to why in the heck these humans are in its vicinity. You know, Mr. Elephant, I was wondering the same thing. Oh boy, look how close this diver was to being a snack for this great white. The shark was really trying to get into this cage, but this ladder looking thing looks to be what saved the diver. Too close for comfort for me. OMG, look how close this shark was to chomping this man's head off. Yikes. For all of you dog owners, y'all know how your pups get when they think it's time to play, especially when they see a toy or a ball. This beautiful pooch was very happy to see a tennis ball. It could have never anticipated what happened next. <laughs> I don't know why this is so gratifying to see this albino rhombic egg eating snake devour this egg, but it indeed was. Check it out. You want to talk about balls of steel, y'all? How about laying down on the ground as a bull elephant patrols the area? Dude is one mistimed sneeze from being flattened like a pancake. King Cobras are the largest of all the venomous snakes. These things are absolutely terrifying to see and extremely intimidating. This guy has one tangled up in his blinds and he handles the beast like a pro. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe for the best animal commentary out there. I am Curtis. See you next time. Okay. Do good, do great, and they talk bad on you. No mean, no face, cause they're not factual. I won't stay too long here, I'm just passing through. I might hit the bank and get a bag or two. My mama asked me why.